Hi everyone, it's Mark again here and I'm with Anna again. Anna is one of our full members um, at the Arts and Culture Network where we have, I think just over 60,000 members in four LinkedIn groups all up from all over the world, which is just fantastic. Um, yeah, jazz hands for that one. Um, and I, what I love to do with our, um, with our new full members is to, is to meet like this and, and introduce them to you, uh, which is, which is great. This will be on our YouTube channel and on, uh, in our blog and then promoted over the next few months via all our LinkedIn groups, because the work that Anna does is relevant across theater, arts administration, um, and, and the wider arts and culture group. There'll be another video you can find here if you'd like a deeper dive into, into the work that Anna's currently doing. Uh, but Anna, do please just say hello briefly before I throw you into the deep end here. <laughs> hello everyone, I'm Anna Baldaya. I'm a transformational coach and I work across the creative industries um, to support leaders and creatives find flow and grow. Flow and grow there. You've been, you've, are you sure you haven't worked in branding? <laughs> well, I do my own branding. So well, there you go. I, I love that. my own business. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had a call earlier with one of our other members and she's, uh, she runs her own design, a design and marketing agency. Yeah. And uh, I'm now referring to her as the, as the queen of images and words. So that's, awesome. that's her. Awesome. Anyway. Um, excellent. Now I should point out that I've given, and a very little, if any, warning about what's coming. This is the arts and culture hot top 10. So if you're a Radio 4 listener on, on the BBC, you're, you might recognize it. It's a little bit like Desert Island Discs, but with an arts and culture twist. Um, so uh, we'll get going. Um, it's not the case that people have a favorite in each. So I've told Anna that um, she's welcome to throw it back at me because every time somebody does, I always choose something different, which is hilarious. <laughs> So the first thing I'd like you to consider is, um, do you have a favorite building? Is there, is there a building that comes to mind that makes you think, whoa, oh, if you walk into it or you turn a corner and see it in your mm -hmm. life, is there one? There is a building that sort of changed me that I'm coming back to, which is the Matra Mandir in South India, in Auroville. And the Matra Mandir is a, sphere type of building um, where you enter a sort of spiral staircase and then you go and you sit in a room that has what is to be known one of the biggest crystals in the world and you just sit in a circle and meditate or just sit very still and you see this beautiful strong massive crystal in a you know, in a circular building and you feel a sense of deep peace and the light is projected all across, you know, the, the, the room and it glimmers everywhere. And when I entered that space, I had a real deep moment of insight, you know. So um, I felt a sense of awe and belonging. And that's very difficult. Yeah, to... that's, it sounds like a particularly tangible feeling. That's, that's really quite amazing. What was the name of the building again? It's called the Matre Mandir. Um, Matre Mandir, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a French word, Matre Mandir. It's a mandir for the mother, Matre. Oh, okay. The mandir is sort of the temple, if you like, for the mother. The okay. mother was sort of the originator of this community called Auroville in south of in, in the south of India, um, which is a community that was created. I think it started in the thirties, but like fully established in um, the sixties, seventies, and um, it's a village of its own accord, with people from all over the world that have been living there for a very long time in a very alternative way of living. So if you're seeking an alternative experience and a different way of living outside of society and protocols, they have their own money even, you know, go visit. It's a very different experience. <laughs> brilliant. I love that one. Um, 
Now, do you have a favorite book or a book that you particularly reread, either fiction or nonfiction? Well, I think very relevant to my work is Julia Cameron's An Artist Way. So it's very difficult with books. I mean, oh gosh, there's so many, right? I, I, I'm an avid reader. So it's books are, a, you know, part of my everyday life. But in my work specifically, I think The Artist Way by Julia Cameron is a book that I often find myself recommending to clients. So nice. that's the one to look for. I, I don't, I haven't read it, but I bought it for my wife yes. actually, a few weeks ago. So I might well, I'll have to, I'll, I'll buy it. It might, it may be that you've mentioned it to us, to me on our previous meeting and that's why I bought it. So thank you, if, I think you probably did. Um, excellent. Now the next one is quite tricky. Um, I want you to imagine that you've been um, exiled from all of the countries in which you've lived before. Okay. And you can choose a new country to live in based on your perception of its culture. But I can't go back to a place I've been. You can't go back, no. Oh, right. You, are you, if you've visited, yes, but not if you've been a resident. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's challenging. Because I've traveled a lot. And every time I have a country that I feel like I want to try living in, I've done it. I've gone and lived in it. Okay, well, I'm going to, I have a special <laughs> dispensation here. Um, if, but Australia, I, I haven't. So I'll give you that. I think okay. that's coming up for me. So I haven't, um, I haven't lived in Australia. And I'm curious about it. Because I've lived in different countries in Asia, South America, in the United States, which I would love to go back to, so but I can't because I'm exiled now. So I haven't lived in Australia. Okay, yeah, I will. We'll give you Australia. That's great. I'd stick to that. And now, um, what about a favourite sport, either as a participant or a spectator? Swimming, water, nice. particularly under the water. Is Underwater where... swimming. Yeah. My right. brother's a big fan of wild swimming. He, he loves swimming in rivers and lakes rather than swimming pools. So, yeah, um, love that. Good. Now, this one's this one's cruel. Okay. Um, I'm going to limit you to listening to only one musical genre for the rest of your life. What type of music would you choose? Oh, that is difficult. I think I would have to, I'm, I'm tending between two, but I think I would go with electronic music. Okay. Because I think the complexity of what we can get and the variety is wider. So the other one was classical music, just because the resonance and, you know, it's really important to have that. And I can't imagine not listening to it ever again. But I think we can reach layers in, ele in electronic music that touch upon what classical music can do for us as listeners. Okay. Nice. That's a, that's a smart choice. That. I can play more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can probably play it at different speeds and it would sound very different. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever heard Beethoven Stretch? No. It's the Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Yeah. Stretched but not pitch changed. It right. takes 24 hours to listen to it. Okay. That so is a chord could one one beat, one beat in the piece at the at the appropriate speed could last 15 minutes in this. It's called Beethoven Stretch. It's amazing. I'm going to have another listen. Yeah. It's it is hypnotic. Um I need to write it down again. Hang on, Beethoven Stretch. It was done. Oh, 20 years ago, I think. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably on Spotify somewhere. Yeah. 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 We'll so, look yeah. So you could you could slow your electronic music down so that it becomes almost like chill out trance as well. That would be exactly. You can get yeah. all sort of symphony. Yeah. Clever. That's a, that's the cleverest answer I've had to that question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> some, people, some people opt for pop because it it, it's, it gives them the right. broadest one. Uh, yeah. um, 
but as a, I, I didn't expect the head of Chinese art at Sotheby's to choose hip hop. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's unexpected. <laughs> there's, that's... there's always a surprise. Okay, that's great. Now, do you have a particularly favorite visual artist? Mm, it, it's quite hard because there's so many that are coming up to my mind. It's difficult to find one particular one. Um, but I really like Miro, the, you know, the Spanish Miro. Mm. Um, I've always liked his work and, you know, I had it around me. Perhaps that's why it's coming up because I grew up with posters of it, you know, in my parents' house. And so maybe just ingrained and it cemented itself mm -hmm. in my memory somewhere. Where did you grow up, Anna? In Portugal. I grew up in, in Portugal. Portugal, yes. Whereabouts so, in Portugal was it? Um, Porto in the north. Okay. Porto, the city, the port wine. <laughs> yes, nice. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, excellent. Then, do you have a favorite play or musical? Oh, another very difficult one, right? Play. Um, always a play over a musical, although it's easier to say the musical. I think Chicago as a musical would be my, my go to because mm -hmm. I've seen it so many times and it's such fun. Um, but as a play, I think I could either say I'm a big fan of Chekhov. So The Seagull or Three Sisters would be wonderful. And I, I really enjoyed playing that. Um, and every time I see a new version of it, I see a new dimension and a new layer to both characters and text. So mm. that's... I'm a really big fan of Chekhov. Um, but then on the other hand, I could go for something a bit more contemporary and just look at, um, you know, Edward Arby, like, was afraid of Virginia Woolf, which is about um, the complexity of modern life and has, a, a, again, a lot of psycholo psychological dimensions to it. So mm. you know, what is marriage that looks very nice and yet it unfolds into being some really deep complexity behind it that is revealed as the play advances mm. so it becomes very dense psychological but mm. drama a hundred percent that's great um two more to go um and so what would your favorite movie be or is there there a movie you can rewatch and rewatch and see find find something new in it. Wow, uh, there's so many, but I really, I was, you know, I remember watching the piano. the The piano um, had a really great. Um, I'm trying to remember the director's name, but I can't remember. It's a woman, but um, the piano was a film quite a long time ago, it did get, um, it went to Cannes and I think got Palm d'Or. Um, mm. And it, it was a really brilliant piece because the actor, the actress, she was playing in mute. And so she expressed herself through her music. So the piano had wonderful music as part of, of the film and but the acting was extraordinary because she wasn't speaking and she was expressing herself in so many different ways it's a period drama but the acting was so good and there was such a vulnerability to the story and it was quite feminist in a way as well so mm -hmm. I really resonated with it it was a piece that I saw various times and then I listened to the music for for many years to come and I still remember you, you know the music so mm -hmm. I love that both the music the acting the writing were really good and all of it coming together with beautiful scenery um was an incredible piece so it's quite old uh, I mean not too old but you know it's not a very recent film I think I was I don't know. I was a, a teenager, I think, when that came out. Mm. Yeah. I love it. I'm going to dig that out and watch it again. 
<laughs> that's the other great thing about doing this I'm, I'm getting some wonderful tips on books on plays on, <laughs> and so finally um apart from me who was the last person to make you laugh <laughs> oh ah uh, charlie george charlie george is a friend of mine she's also a comedian and i love going and supporting my friends in the arts and i always try and go and watch their shows and so watch Charlie George I think um, she was on ITV uh, a cup last week I think it was so it's still on ITV um, you can on demand you can watch mm -hmm. um, she's a queer comedian she's ace she's a new talent she's um, very good and I'm just promoting my friends suddenly but you know we had a really good laugh last weekend so why not <laughs> Why not? Indeed. That's that's lovely. Thank you for those answers. You did brilliantly without any warning. So that was that, that's half the fun. But um, we're going to do another one um, shortly. But for the in the meantime, Anna, thanks again for being a member, a full member of our gang. Um, and thank you so much for joining me to do this arts and culture hot top 10 today. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Mark. That was fun. <laughs>